Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com as we present this message from a preacher and our brother named John Bales. Brother John hails from the Canton, Ohio area at the time of this recording, and he will be bringing a two-part message titled Eternal Security. So have your King James Bible open and ready to study along as we join Brother John Bales for part one of this study titled Eternal Security. All right, <clears throat> we're gonna do Eternal Security tonight. We're gonna talk about it, look at it, uh, see what the Bible says about it, and we're gonna look at also uh, some heresies concerning it. As with any uh, sound Bible doctrine that there is, there's going to be heresies about it. People are going to take it and twist it. And so we're going to take a look at some of them. Uh, the first one here is uh, you cannot lose your salvation. Now I'm sure if you've been here around here long enough, uh, you've heard that preached and you've heard that taught. But uh, there's a catch to this. We'll get back to it. But Premise two, all believers are eternally secure. Of course, that's something also that you've heard if you've been around here long enough, but there's a catch to that, to those people that believe that. Uh, the third one is you have no security. This is, these are heresies that we're going to look at real quick. Or not real quick, we're, however long. And then uh, premise four is uh, you are secure no matter what. Now, that would be the position of a Bible believer. Premise one. Maybe some of you are, uh, yeah, boo. Uh, maybe some of you are familiar with this. Perseverance of the saints, it's also called Calvinism. And we're, look at that tulip, but it's mainly the P right there. It stands for perseverance of the saints. Uh, they're called Calvinists from a man named John Calvin about the time of the Reformation. They believe, uh, like we do, that salvation is entirely by grace and that you do not have to work, uh, do good deeds and, you know, stay out of jail to be saved. And nor do they, see, now, there's a kind of a catch to this. And uh, they don't believe you have to endure the, to the end to be saved. <clears throat> but there's a catch. And right here, this is from Cornerstone Baptist Church in Maslin, Ohio. It's independent, fundamental. Uh, they would probably not claim to be Calvinists, but we're look here. This is under their statement of faith, and it says perseverance of the saints. It says, we believe that the scriptures teach that uh, such as are truly regenerated, being born again of the Spirit, will not utterly fall away from the faith, but will continue in it, and that their preserving attachment to Christ is one mark that distinguishes them from superficial professors and are kept by the power of God through faith. Now you say, what's wrong with that? Well, we're going to look into it, but that's Calvinism. That's the P in Tulip. Now this is Heritage Reformed Baptist Church in North Canton. I picked that because I used to drive past it, and I, I know it's there. And they hold to the Baptist Confession of Faith of 1689. And it says, to those, uh, those whom God has accepted in the Beloved, can neither totally nor finally fall from the state of grace, but shall certainly persevere therein to the end and be eternally saved. Now I told you they don't believe that you have to endure to the end of your life to be saved or till the rapture, but their thing is that true believers will never backslide or true believers will never sin in such a way. Uh, so do you kind of see how that goes? Now, I'll try and get ahead of myself here, but let's look at 1 Timothy chapter 1. So the question is, to the Calvinists, they don't believe that a Christian uh, can sin to the uh, point where he gets away from the faith. 1 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 18. It says, This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou mightest war a good warfare, hoarding faith, faith, and a good conscience, which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenaeus and Alexander, 
whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So according to a Calvinist, uh, they will say these people were never saved, the, these two men here. But uh, if, you, if you're familiar with 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 5, go ahead and turn there. But Paul here, he said he's delivered them unto Satan that they may learn not to blaspheme. So these two guys right here were in the faith. Why? Because they made shipwreck of the faith. So these people were saved. Just like the guy in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians is a corrective letter. Paul's writing to the Corinthians, trying to shape them up. And uh, in 1 Corinthians 5, you had a guy that was uh, messed up in fornication with his um, father's wife. And in verse 5, Paul does the same thing. He says, To deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So what you have here is you have believers. And these believers are really messing up. And so Paul, in prayer, gives it over to Jesus Christ. And he says, Lord, I pray the devil will get a hold of these people to straighten them up to the destruction of the flesh. So the Calvinists would say, see this guy here, 1 Corinthians 5, he was never saved. That's why he was delivered to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. And they tell you a real Christian would never commit such a thing. Turn to Acts chapter 20. Now this is uh, the Apostle Paul again. He's with the elders at the church of Ephesus. And in verse 30, we pick up his message to him, and he says, Also of unbelievers, sh no, also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. So again, the Calvinists would maybe take this verse here and say, uh, you know, a real Christian would never get stuck in heresy, at least die in that way. And so these people right here are not, they're just professors. They're not possessors. And uh, he would go on to say that, uh, just that, follow that line of thinking. And their whole point is, uh, we'll get to is uh, that God is sovereign and nothing else. They're big time on the sovereignty of God. And they, they talk about the sovereignty of God, that God is in control. And you can see that in the creation. When God created things, no doubt God was in control. The sun, the moon, the stars, the animals, all that. And man had nothing to do with it. So they take that same thinking and apply it over to salvation. And um, before we get into that, look at Titus chapter 1, though. Making the case that believers can sin, believers can get caught up. But uh, Titus 1.13, he says, This witness is true, wherefore rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. And verses 9 to 11 he describes these people. Now, if I'm going to rebuke somebody so they're sound in the faith, doesn't it make sense that they are in the faith? And so these people here, 9 to 10 to 11, 12, 13, are people that are really messed up. They're Christians. They're in the faith, but they're very much messed up. And so the question tonight is, can you get in the situation? In Acts 15 here, you have the uh, Pharisees that believed. These Pharisees are saved. And yet they're going around telling people, hey, you got to keep the law of Mo Moses to be saved and you got to be circumcised. It doesn't matter if you're an adult. you got to be circumcised. That's what they're going around teaching. And they were believers. They were believers and they were believers that were messed up. Now a Calvinist, he'll take you and he'll look at 1 Corinthians 5. That guy wasn't saved. Those two guys weren't saved. They weren't saved. They weren't saved. Because we've seen the, the statement of faith they believe that true believers, true believers, will endure to the end, hold, hold the faith. And you can spot them, because a lot of times they talk about, well, only true believers. Did you truly believe? And they can really, really get uh, people that aren't sound in the Bible doubting their salvation. And uh, maybe something like this. Hey, I'll tell you what, if you... If you woke up without a desire to read the Bible, you're not saved. And they just preach all these crazy things like that. 
And a real Christian would never do that. Uh, when I first got saved, I had this guy at the church I went to. He would come up to me. I don't know if he made up his own list or if he had a list somewhere or uh, maybe somebody emailed it to him of a thing that real, real Christians wouldn't do. Now, of course, we've just seen real Christians here, and we know what real Christians are capable of. And so the question is, can you lose your salvation? <clears throat> uh, we'll skip that. <laughs> um, perseverance of the saints. Again, uh, Calvinism. Some saints do fall away. We sh uh, showed that. And here's another thing about Calvinism with their perseverance of the saint. They believe that, okay, you, you uh, a Christian, some of them will give more room than others as far as backsliding goes. Uh, some are very, uh, very rigid on it. But some will say, well, a Christian can depart. He can backslide, but he, he'll come back if he's a real Christian before he dies. But 1 John 5, 16 says there's a sin unto death, which means yeah. if you sin a sin, if you're sinning and you die because of that sin, that gave you no time to repent. So the Calvinist would say, you weren't saved, you didn't come back, that guy was never saved. See, perseverance of the saints and eternal security are very different. Right. Uh, when I've been reading through different literature and stuff, people try and want to make them the same, but they're not. Right. Uh, Calvinism, they say a real Christian cannot die backslidden. I say, 1 Corinthians 5, 5 said the man was delivered to Satan for the destruction, death of the flesh. 1 John 5.16 says there's a sin unto death. Then, of course, some are never saved. Uh, 1 John 2.18 and 19, it talks about verse 19, says they went out from us, but they were not of us. If they were of us, they would have, you know, continued with us. And then Judas, uh, the people that believe you can lose your salvation, believe that Judas was saved at one point, and then he lost his salvation. But Jesus said, you are a devil. And then they also, I'm getting ahead of myself, <laughs> but in verse 18 of 1 John, it says the, the people that believe you can lose your salvation will say, uh, see, these people were saved, they were with the apostles, but they went out, so they lost their salvation. But the thing there, same with Judas, <laughs> same with Judas, uh, in verse 18 it says they were antichrists. Mm -hmm. They never got saved. Right. There's a difference. All right, what does Calvinism produce? It produces retreads. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now, that's a, it's a, um, I think they should do this with car tires, but uh, with semis, they actually, uh, have you seen the big uh, things on the side of the road? It's because they glue the tread onto the rubber tire. And so when the tread wears down, they scrape it off, and they glue a new thing on there. So they're actually uh, retreading the tire. And so what, as far as spiritually speaking goes, I told you, you know, a preacher will get up and he'll say, I tell you what, if your desire is not in the house of God on Sunday morning, you're not saved. And so people will hear that and they'll get under conviction and a guy will come in and maybe he'll preach a revival or something and uh, people will get saved. You know, they're like, wow, you know, my, I sure haven't prayed like I once did. I, I must have never really been saved. And so they'll get saved again. <laughs> and again... <laughs> And again, and again, uh, Lordship salvation, that's simply that uh, if, maybe you've heard the phrase, if he's not Lord of all, he's not Lord at all. Mm -hmm. And they say that when you come to Jesus Christ, <clears throat> you're stopped doing all the things you shouldn't do, and you're start doing all the things you should do. Which means if he's not your Lord, as, as in the idea of a, a master, or as an idea of a governor, or something like that, of your life, where you do everything he has said, you're not saved. That's their, that's their thinking, and that's what they preach. Also, insecurity. How could you possibly know right now that you're saved? I know I'm saved. Apostle Paul knew he was saved. It's very evident that all the New Testament writers knew when they wrote at that moment that they were saved. But I could not know if I'm saved at this moment because I could backslide and die in that condition. And according to a Calvinist, if you backslide and die in that condition, you were never saved. So how, how, how can I know right now if I'm saved? Because I don't know. I may backslide uh, in the future sometime and die that way. And then, of course, popish doctrines. 
uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 9 to 11, it says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? And then he comes up with a list. That's his list, you know? And, uh, at the, and then, so a Calvinist will see that, and he'll say, well, you can't get to heaven by works. So obviously, 1 Corinthians 6 is describing somebody that's not saved. So the obvious, the, the logical conclusion is, Christians do not commit those sins in 1 Corinthians 6, which, you know, that's false. We could go back and I'll show you those uh, verses describing Christians. So what they have to do now, they have to invent, they got this list here, sins that a Christian can't commit. Uh, so that what they're saying is if you're committing those sins and you die, you weren't saved. But they admit that Christians still do sin. And so they got a list of venial sins that it's usually the ones they commit, oh, that ain't nothing, you know, come on. <laughs> and then the mortal sins, which if you're caught up with in, and you die in that way, the uh, pastor will say, uh, he sent his day of grace away. Or, so just, they're just really messed up. But that's, that's what uh, Calvinism produces. No insecurity, venial, mortal sins. The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. Amen. But the thing about 1 Corinthians 6, 9, and 10, they quote 9 and 10, but they stop. Yeah. They don't quote verse 11. Right. Verse 11 says something along the lines of, but you are washed, you are sanctified, you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus. What's that mean? That means the sins in 9 and 10 are washed away. Amen. The sinner in verses 9 and 10 is now justified. Premise 2. Conditional security. Now, is this, is this pronounced Arminianism? Yeah. All right, good. That, 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 now, there's an ethnic group of people that that's pronounced something else, right? Yeah. How's that? Well, it sounds the same, but it's spelled different. Hmm. Yeah. That's the correct one for what I'm yes. talking about. <clears throat> you got the right one. Good. <laughs> I'd hate to hear about it later. <laughs> All right, Arminianism. Now, this is simply, uh, you know, you had John Calvin. And uh, he came up with this tulip, five points there. And then this guy came up, uh, I don't think he had his own flower, but he came up with uh, uh, things that were against Calvinism. It was five points, though. Was it? <laughs> Is it a... It's not a... It's not a <laughs> acronym? <laughs> Acorn? It's called Daisy. But really, but I, I've been saved for... No. <laughs> Roundup. Um, I, I've been saved for 12 years, and I had really never, as far as Arminianism goes, uh, we're looking at what you're probably most familiar with as far as losing your salvation, that heresy goes. But uh, I picked up a book. It said uh, Four Views on Eternal Security. And it gave uh, different ones than what we're doing here. But one of them was this, and I, was, I wasn't really familiar with it, so it was pretty, a lot of it was new to me. And then I watched uh, some other things on YouTube, which was interesting. <laughs> but all right, they believe that salvation is eternal, everlasting. Do you believe that? Amen. 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 Oh, kind of gave it away. Uh, <laughs> nothing can separate you from God. They believe that. We believe that. Mm -hmm. You can't lose salvation by sinning. We believe that. They believe that. All right. Uh, so, but, uh, salvation is a present position, possession. They believe that. We believe that. Now, see, the thing is, is uh, you know, with the Calvinist, uh, if you listen to a Calvinist talk about perseverance of the saints, probably maybe half to three quarters of the things he says you could agree with and still be, you know, doctrinally sound. But <clears throat> he's got a, just enough truth in there that unsuspecting people will pick up on that. Listen to this guy, oh, he's good on eternal security, so maybe he's good on this, maybe he's good on that, maybe, you know, and then that's how people get sucked into uh, whack jobs. But as, again, with Calvinism, remember Calvinists believe that uh, eternal security. They believe all this, but there's a catch. You have to remain in Christ. Now listen to this. All right, so we got this. But you know how they tell you you remain in Christ? By continually believing. Right. They, don't, they, they say, hey, 
a Christian can sin and he can die that way, but as long as he believed up until he died, he's eternally secure. And then they'll tell you, a Christian uh, believes he's saved, uh, uh, he has eternal life, but if he quits believing, he's lost his salvation. It's wrong. Romans 14.23, <clears throat> it says, Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So, unbelief is sin. Titus 3, 10 and 11. Let's turn there. Since I'm in Titus, I don't know about you. <laughs> a man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sinneth. So you got this man here, a heretic. He's an apostate. He's fallen from the truth. He's teaching... Uh, uh, false doctrine. And these Armenians say, you know, if you quit believing, you lose your salvation. If you apostatize, you lose your salvation. And uh, backslide in the sense of quit believing, you lose your salvation. Well, apostasy is, apostasy is a sin. If you become a heretic and you fall from the, the truth, you're a heretic and it says you sin. Unbelief is a sin. So, an Arminian of this flavor will tell you that sin can't separate you from Christ. Just unbelief. But unbelief is a sin. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up. So if sin can't remove you from being in Christ, then neither can unbelief, apostasy, and backsliding. Now, am I teaching that you should doubt God and uh, be a heretic and backslide? Does anybody get that impression that I'm coming off? I mean, anybody get that idea? Okay. Romans 8, 35 to 39. Most people say, did you know there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God? That's how we hear it. That's how we hear it preached a lot. And an Arminian will agree with that. He'll tell you, if you're saved, nothing can separate you from the love of God as long as you continue to believe. He, he adds this catch there. But it says the love of God is in Christ Jesus. So that tells me that if nothing can separ separate me from the love of God, then nothing can separate me from being in Christ because that's where the love of God is. So they're telling you nothing can separate you from the love of God, but unbelief, unbelief is a sin. Nothing can separate you from being in Christ. It is not up to you to remain in Christ. If nothing can separate you from being in Christ, then their idea of quitting believing that can't separate you from being in Christ either. Those that can uh, believe you can lose your salvation for any reason are ignorant of the righteousness of Christ. Amen. So what's the righteousness of Christ? The, this doctrine right here, and um, Paul kind of alludes to it in Philemon, where he says, uh, he tells, I think it's Onesimus, uh, and uh, what's the other guy's name? Well, anyway, you, you know. But uh, uh, he says, if he owes thee anything, put it on my account. And my pastor at the time preached on the imputed righteousness of Christ from that passage in Philemon. But what it is, is the imputed righteousness is when God gives you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He puts it on your account and he counts it for you. Okay? And you get that by faith, by believing the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, um, I tell people, do you want to go to heaven uh, based on how good you are? Or would you rather go to heaven based on how good Jesus Christ is? Well, he's sinless. You're a sinner. You can't get to heaven based on how good you are because you're not good. You need the righteousness of Christ. You get that by faith. But it's not just, it doesn't stop there. Sin is no longer imputed to you. David described the blessedness of the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not sin. What's that mean? That means sin, when you commit, is no longer counted against you. Now, if I get out, if I go get drunk and I slam into a telephone pool, uh, sin, that sin will be counted against me. But as far as sin separating me from God or sin keeping me out of heaven... That's not the case. It's no longer imputed to me. Amen. Now, does anybody get the idea that I'm teaching we should go out and get drunk or we should cheat on our wives if you have, yeah, uh, if, if you have a wife? No, no, I, I didn't think anybody was getting that idea. Just teaching sound doctrine. 
Now, if you want to use sound doctrine to justify sin, that's between you and God. Yeah. <clears throat> Premise three. Now, this is most likely what we're all familiar with. This is what <clears throat> I was familiar with. Uh, a lot of the holiness, Pentecostals, apostolics, so forth, they believe that uh, you have no security. And one guy put it this way. He said, you know, I was raised in that uh, church, and they told me if I was walking down the street and I had a bad thought, and I didn't confess it to God, and I got hit by a car, I'd die and go to hell. Yeah. So they, they believe that when you sin, you have to confess it to God to be forgiven. Now there's, again, you know, if, if, if a Calvinist or an Arminian were to listen to this, he would say, oh, that's not what I believe. Well, there's just so many different flavors of heretics that it's hard to, you know, lump them all into one group. And so I'm just kind of sweeping statements here. Uh, if the shoe fits, fit, uh, wear it. But uh, some believe that you can lose your salvation and get it back. They say Peter was saved, he denied and cussed, and then he got saved again. And so Peter lost his salvation and got it back. Uh, Peter, was, Peter was saved by believing in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, some believe you can lose salvation and never get it back. This is, uh, I don't know, holiness type people. Pro probably wrong on that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there are people that believe that. And it's Hebrews 6, 4 to 6. And that says that along the lines of it's impossible. Here, we can turn there. Hebrews chapter 6. Four and six. Four to six. And it says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost <clears throat> and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. But we'll get back to this and give you the real explanation but they use that as a as a as a proof text to say that if you sin and you fall away from Jesus Christ you cannot come back that you're damned I had a guy the other day ask me he goes you know I believed in stuff uh, uh, you know but I, I kind of fell away what do I do and I told him well you just go back to God but if I was an Armenian that believed this I'd have to say well there ain't much you can do I mean you're gonna go to hell anyway <laughs> I mean, that, that's what they would have to tell them. They the believe you can lose your salvation and never get it back. If somebody comes to you and says, I fell away for a time, I want to come back to God, you would have to look them in the eye and say, you're going to hell and there's nothing you can do about it. But of course, it's not true, so. Amen. Yeah. Uh, all these, the holiness people, the people who believe you have to, that uh, you can uh, lose your salvation, believe you have to continue, endure to the end. They've taken... Uh, one thing you'll notice about heretics is they cherry pick verses and they take them out of the context in which they were supposed to be. Like this in Hebrews chapter 6 is an example. <clears throat> like I, that's what I told you. If you're walking down the street and you have the thought of uh, maybe poisoning your neighbor's dog, uh, if you get hit by a car before you confess that, um, uh, you, you struggle with those thoughts, <laughs> but they, they, but if, but they say, you know, if if you if you if you're thinking wrong and you die before you confessed it, you're going to hell. They believe you can lose your salvation. So Colossians two thirteen, and Colossians three thirteen. Remember thirteen. It's good for once. Two and three. Let's turn there because I mean you really got to get these down. These are good verses to get down. Now, I always hear bits and pieces of different beliefs and stuff, and it's always hard to get a certain name tag on them and who it is that identifies what they identify themselves with that believe it. But has anybody ever heard of the teaching that talks about, uh, yeah, you know, your sins were forgiven uh, before you were saved, but now that you're saved, you got to...